Hey guys, welcome back to Dawn Investments. Today we're just going to be going over our second part of our safe trading strategy. Just quickly going more in detail about our risk management strategy, which is quite frankly our most important part of our strategy. Uh, proper risk management gets you consistent, consistent gains and saves you a lot of money if done correctly. The way we're going to go over, the first part we're going to go over for today is chasing. Right now it's intraday. It's around 11 a.m. This is around the time I stopped trading. And I'm just going to go over maybe some of the trades I went over today. And, you know, other trades that would have been considered chasing, chasing the stock. This is a big problem for a lot of new traders. It was for me. And I know a lot of people that ask for my opinion have this problem and it could really make you lose some money. So starting with OPTT, this is what I traded today. Um, we bought in, we bought in here at a support at 170, at 171. And we sold it at 209 at a resistance. But chasing, chasing the stock, is buying it around uh around the resistance that you're not sure about this this it had a flag so we bought it again after this resistance so this buying it here wouldn't have been a chase but then buying it after it's been up 40 percent and then you see a red candle like like how it is here this is even a uh, inverted hammer right here at the top of a run. This right here, or buying it anywhere in this range is a chase. We set a little resistance line right here because it was bouncing off of this. It was bouncing. It was trying to break this resistance at the time. And if you haven't bought in yet and it's already up 40% and it's trying to break a resistance right here, honestly, it's it's a chase. It's not something that you might, it's, it's very risky to get in at that point. I wouldn't even suggest it. It's already up 40%. It's probably pretty extended for the day. Not a lot of stocks get to 40 and even less stocks pass it. So for something like this, I would, instead of buying it here at a resistance it's trying to break, I would wait for it to pull back to, you know, a previous support like it did here. You know, this was a potential buy-in. It didn't go that far. Like it only went 8% from, which is good from this support, but this is way this is a way better buy point than here if anything like even if you don't really analyze it at all just buying it as support is always better than buying it at a resistance and sending your stop loss you know two per, two percent away or depending on your account on your risk management just send it send it not too far away for something like this that's you know low priced I increased, like I say in my other safe trading video, I increased my stop loss percentage a little bit and I sell it like at an EMA. This is 4% away. I would have set it right here. But I didn't re I didn't rebuy into this stock. I was done after I was done after the it came out. After I sold and it came out here. I was just I was done for the stock for today. It came, it drove up more, but that was really all I wanted from it. The next time I want to show um, an example of chasing, um, I'll use MNKD. This stock is an interesting stock because I've made a lot of money from it. And especially over the past couple of days. Actually, I'm going to use, I'm going to use something else. I'm going to use something that I made money off of yesterday. Yeah, uh, TRXE. It came out with a patent or some. it came out with some robotic thing. And, you know, it spiked up. We bought it at the... Uh, we bought it at this resistance, and then we bought it again here at this little line, right there, and then, and then we held it. We ended up selling it today for less, way less than we could have got it yesterday because we held it, which was technically a mistake. But you know, everyone makes certain mistakes like that. But in terms of chasing, chasing the stock is seeing it go. All right, it's already up 20, 27 percent. At this point, we still thought it was a good buy at this point because there's a lot of volume. 
I think around that time, more news came out, and it was forming candlesticks at this um, resistance, and it was bouncing off of VMA. If those happen, then then you can possibly go in for going for and it won't be considered a chase. This situation is different than today's OPTT because here TRXC and OPTT are both bouncing off a of resistance like this. But OPTT had a, a bearish candle and was up 40%. TRXC was up a lot too, but there was no bearish extremely bearish candle at the resistance and even if this one counts as the bearish candle it bounced right off of the ema of the next candlestick but see chasing i would still even consider this chasing just because it's up so much and around this area i would definitely just be wary about a stock but the chase will be coming around this area at this point from the from the beginning of the day it's up 56 percent that's dangerous. Get, uh, getting into something that 56% increase, this is like HM and Y or something like that. But see, it's up 56% and it's at a $5 resistance. That's a whole number resistance and that's a natural resistance. That is just, that is just trouble. So right there, you should be getting ready to sell. Or if you're going to continue to hold, you should you should really be looking for bullish candles. But once you see, once you saw this bearish candle, this doji up here at the top of an uptrend that is a sign to get rid of the, to get rid of the stock. But I know a lot of people who got in around this price, even though it seems so simple now. But I know a lot of people got in around this price and lost money because they thought it was going to keep going because they you know listen to stock twits or they listen to other people's opinion. But at the end of the day, you should do your own research and realize that. A stock up 40, 50 percent, hitting a whole number of resistance. Unless there's some extremely great news out there, it's definitely a time to sell and just you know lock in your profits. The next part of the strategy is risk management based on the price of stock. I touched on it on the first video on the safe trading strategy, but I really want to just touch on it again because of how important it is. The price of a stock can really affect how you approach risk management. Like I said, with lower price stocks, I increase my stop loss a little bit. It doesn't mean I increase it like all the way, like oh, a twenty percent stop loss. See, that's just that's not that's not smart. Risk management. I increase my stop loss instead of two percent on a higher price stock. I would increase it maybe like to four to seven percent. Like if I bought here. My stop loss wouldn't have been 2% away because stocks like this are real volatile. But instead, my stop loss would have been around 5% away, 5 to 7, or 4 to 7, or whichever one. And then I would have based it off like the EMA. Like I would have put it on this this yellow this yellow line right now, which is my uh, 90, this should be my 90 day EMA right here. Or no, this is my 50 day EMA, sorry. So I would have set it at my 50 day and you know just let it go. It, it would never and it wouldn't have hit it. But for the price of a stock, you should really take into account a lot of risk management strategies. Looking let's look at something more expensive. Uh this is a little more expensive. It's moving well. This thing, let's say it's coincidentally at its peak resistance right here. Setting a four percent stop loss like I did with the other thing is a bit is a bit ridiculous because at this point if it's if it's all the way down here, you should have sold it a while ago because if you're trading these you probably have more money in your account and you would have lost more money if you're waiting for four percent resistance. So a good risk management strategy would be to set your stop loss for this higher price stock at a two percent loss, which is around here or you can even if you're a little risky you base it off this 200 day ema because stuff usually bounces off this too but for me personally if it breaks this vwap like if it's coming down and it, it should bounce off the vwap a little bit it naturally does it, sh it should do that for a little bit 
And if it doesn't bounce back up off the view app, but it said breaks down through it, that's where my stop loss should be initiated. I usually set my stop losses at view apps, but with the 2% rule that I make, 2% is here and this should also be a good place to exit out. But like I said, in my case, the view app is my stop loss out. Unless like, because unless I have with a high, I know with a large position, emotions come into play, you know, you don't want to start over, especially if you, if you've been holding it for a while, but sometimes you just got to cut your losses and my cut my losses is at this view app. And I think that's a perfect place to sell if it breaks it. I should, I want to have it at the view app exactly because like I said, things bounce off the view app and maybe go like a little bit under it. But if it's like going like, like this under it, like a little bit more than like a percent under the view app. Yeah. It's definitely time to let it go because that's on the downtrend and I will buy it and sell it and then buy it again at a lower price. If you really believe in the stock, the next thing I want to go over is how the news can affect the stock and how you should be wary of it. Going looking at news, there's things called pumping dumps and that's, you know, people spreading like fake positive news. So the stock goes up and then they sell it for profit, blah, blah, blah. But most, of, but that's just like a separate case, but that's really how news can affect a stock, not pumping, pumping dumps specific specifically, but news can affect the stock because good news can push up a stock all the way like this or with TRXC push it up all the way like this and then people get excited and buy it. But being a good trader, you have to really analyze the news. You have to really read the article. You can't just trade based on news because some news is stronger than others. And you should be still with, if it's just trading based on news and you could tell that it's trading based on news, if it's spiking, if it spiked like 40% or 20% right after a news article came out, then it's trading based on news. And if it's trading based on news, you should be really careful when you're trading a stock because at any time, once sellers, once a group of sellers sell, that means with when it's trading based on news, once a group of sellers sell or so the price starts going down, all the people, a lot of day traders and swing traders or something are going to lock in, lock in their profits because they're not believing in the stock's fundamentals. They didn't probably didn't even look. They're trading straight based on news. So trading based on news, I would suggest always keeping an eye on the stock. And, get, and being ready to sell at a moment's notice, not being one of those people, you know, that believe the news is going to make it run for, you know, a week or something like that, which is possible, but just unlikely. So if you see it spiking because of a news article, look for your quick gain and be ready to sell because once it, once it starts dropping, a lot of people are going to sell and you're going to be very disappointed if you lose your potential profit. And you can see this as an example, maybe MNKD, this has been dropping, uh, this has been dropping a lot. This, this was trading on news, because if you look at his fundamentals, I'm sure you won't find anything spectacular, especially with a stock price like this. So you can tell it was trading just based on a lot of news. And with that, people should be ready, definitely ready. Like it held for a couple of days going up, but people should be ready. Once you see like, a string of reddish candles if you're up a good percent just get ready to sell for us trading on news we look for like we say in other videos three to seven percent three to seven percent is my goal for every trade sometimes i get more sometimes i get i usually don't get less but sometimes i get more and sometimes i'm around three percent which is you know it's low but it's better than nothing and that's what i look for when i'm trading news I try to get in early. You buy the rumor, you sell when you sell the news. That's what a lot of people do. But I try to get by the rumor. Uh, let's see for something I traded like uh, TRXC. Make this a 10 day. Some news came out around here or something like that around this area. You can see it was traded on news. Uh, since the news just came out, we decided to hold it overnight. We bought it around 270. Then we held it overnight. We bought it again today. But this whole the whole time I was ready to sell. 
But unfortunately with TRXC, like the mistake I just said, you should definitely, we didn't sell in time. We didn't sell at $5. We sold around here and then we sold the rest the next day around this price, this uh, line that we made right here, which, which could have been avoided if we stuck to our own rules and, you know, just if something's trading on rules, just be ready to sell early. Any sign of a bearish downtrend, just get ready to sell because news isn't something that can last. The news spikes can't last forever. For some, for if you want to hold a stock, I would suggest being more, being more reliant on things like the fundamentals, or, you know, their debt, their equity, their PE, PG, stuff like that, and the company, the CEO. But if it's just based on news, I would always say don't take the risk and hold it for too long. Just take your profits and don't be greedy when it comes to news. And yeah, so overall, just and over my overall tip for risk management is what I've always say in other videos and early in this video. Look, just look for the quick profits. Look for three hundred percent gain, three to seven percent gains. Every trade shouldn't, doesn't have to be 10%. Every trade doesn't even have to be 7%. You know, sometimes you'll make more than 7 but a lot of the times, getting that 3 to 7 is way better than nothing, and it's way better than losing money. So look for those 3 to 7% gains. And, you know, save, save the disappointment of losing, losing money. 37% is attainable, it's not hard, and that's the easiest way, honestly, I can say, to make consistent gains trading on the stock market. So, thanks for watching. That was our overall guide to our risk management strategy. And uh, stay tuned for more. We're going to be adding more to the safe trading, to the safe trading series. You can join our Discord in the bottom in the description. And, you know, we go over these rules, you know, before we even make a video, just help people out. If you need help, just we're free. We're here to help. So thanks again for watching.